submitted yourself, even though you have sinned, you have submitted yourself to the will of God and that you've come to God in repentance and you have confessed your sins and you've begged God and asked God to clean up your life and not, not be doing the same things that you used to do before you got saved. And so you come before God's, you come in God's house and you come before God's presence and things as far as, as and it's not what you did, it's what you let God do in your life. How many of you say amen to that? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? It's not that you're perfect. Perfect. My goodness, if perfection from on our part was a requirement for heaven, we would be lost. Because none of us are going to make it. But I'm saying that you have appealed to the mercy in the courthouse of Almighty God. And God has granted you clemency. God has granted you forgiveness. He has wiped away your sin and removed your sentence from you. And if you died today, you know for a fact. Because John said, these things have I written to you that you may know that you have eternal life. And you know for a fact because of the word of God and that God does not lie that you're going to heaven. That's, that's stage one. I hope you're in that stage this morning. Here's, here's stage two. Everything's not all right between you and God. But God is being long-suffering with you. And why is God being long-suffering with you? Because God really, really does not want you to go to hell. And He allowed you to wake up this morning. He allowed you to put clothes on and come to His house and hear the preaching of His Word. God allowed you to experience the, 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 the touch of the Holy Spirit in your life, drawing you to Him. No, everything's not alright in your life and you know it. But God's being long-suffering with you and you can feel God moving in your heart, tugging you, drawing you, pulling you. That's stage two. Stage three... God grows weary with your wickedness and your hard heart. And He sends a warning shot your way to let you know what's coming. Can I tell you, 9-11 was a warning shot to this country. San Francisco earthquake was a warning shot to this country. Hurricane Katrina was a warning shot to this country. And you can and, and you sit there and laugh at this and say, oh, I don't believe that, I don't believe that, and mock that in your mind. But I'm telling you, God's, these wildfires out in California, here the, here the governor, here the governor signs over a law that doesn't just, doesn't just keep public school teachers from saying anything bad about sodomites and cross-dressers. It actually puts in the law that they have to promote it to kindergarten children that it's okay and healthy to have sex with another man or another woman. And if you're a little boy, there's nothing wrong. You ought to go home and put on a dress. That's the law now in California. And God started burning the lower half of that state. That was a warning. And I want to tell you this morning, you sit here and I want you to listen to this. You stop and you give 30 seconds worth of thought to the warning shots that God's been firing by the bow of your ship in the last year. The warning shots that God has fired off to you. The little shakings every now and then to get you to wake up. God's not going to leave you without a testimony. And God is not going to judge you without a warning. And every time, every time things shook up in your life, that was God trying to wake you up. That's stage three. Stage four. Is that God comes when you least expect it and you're not looking. Do you know why? Because God long suffered with you long enough. God shook your ground enough to where you should have woke up. And you didn't. And Almighty God said, It's over. 
Let me tell you something. When God says to you, it's over, it's over. You're gone. And you will spend eternity in hell. Now you can think that this won't happen to you today. And trust me, I've got just a little bit of God's heart in me. I don't want to see you die and go to hell. That's why I preach something like this. I do not want to see you die and go to hell. God doesn't either. So that's why God, that's why, that's why God woke you up this morning, put clothes on you, let your car run all the way to get to this parking lot, and you came in and you sat down in this service. That's why God let you come in this building this morning. Isn't that right? Amen? Isn't that right? Isn't that why God did that for you? Because He doesn't want you to die and go to hell. That's why, if anybody watches this video, who I, you know what I believe? I believe that God will find a way of putting this in somebody's hand that needed to see it. Can I hear you say amen? And I, I, and I won't even know how... I, won't even know how it, I don't know how all these people watching these videos we got. I don't know how they're doing it. And if you're watching this, and if you hear this, I'm telling you, God is trying to wake you up. Because He doesn't want you to die and go to hell. But mark my word, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And you will not escape. Now, I'm, I'm just I'm gonna close this out with this. I give you the I, I, this is just kind of some things I thought, some things I put together, these four stages here. It should be the desire of everybody's heart this morning. To want to be in that first stage. To where everything is right between you and God. I mean everything is. I mean all your sins are gone. You've got a happiness. You've got a peace in your heart that passes anyone's understanding. And you listen, you could just you could just soon live another day as you could die because you're like you're like the Apostle Paul. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Didn't matter to him. He knew that if he lived another day, God was going to use him to spread the gospel. And he knew if he died today, that he would be at home with his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for all of eternity. He knew that in his heart. And here Paul called himself the chief of all sinners. What does that say about our possibilities for heaven? Amen? If Paul's the chief, surely we're under him. We're not as bad as he was. That means all of us have the opportunity and the possibility of having everything right with God. The exact opposite of that is, listen to this, the exact opposite of that is to convince yourself that everything's right with God when the truth is you know that it's not. And how many of you believe that you can lie so much that you even start believing your own lies? You ought to amen that, you deer hunters. Because the story changes from the moment the deer's dead... And it changes year after year. So that 10 years, you actually believe your 10 year anniversary version of that story. Right? Isn't that how it happens? You start believing your own lies. You start convincing yourself that everything's alright between you and God. And I want to tell you something. If you get to that point, I promise you... The day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night to you. And you'll never know what hits you. God has you listening to this for a reason. Stop playing games with Him. And stop thinking that ten years from now, you'll have it different in your life. Because I don't know that you will, and you don't know that you will. Get it right with God. How do I do that? Confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You believe that? Say amen. amen. If you believe that Jesus died on the cross, rose again on the third day, and believe that He is the Lord of your life, you can be saved.
and you can know and then you can have everything right with God. See, it's not a ritual. It's not amount of money. It's not ten years of church attendance that does anything to make you better with God. It is your confession and your repentance to an almighty and a holy God that you are a filthy, rotten sinner and you have broken His law and you're not appealing to God's justice. You're appealing to His mercy and His courthouse. That's what will make things right between you and God. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Simplest thing in the whole world. Most people won't do it. Most people won't do it. Will you do it? Let's stand to our feet.